<laughs> Wait, can we see the fortress? Where are we? Oh, oh no, we're the other side. No, it's the other side. <laughs> it's a point to run the field. <laughs> the fortress is there. <laughs> and we've made it to the Premier Inn. Can we, Joey? Yes. Like, the game is in like. 18 hours, something like that. Um, we're quite near some areas, I think. Not too sure about the whole um, geography of Southampton, but uh, Chris, I can't <laughs> Kelly can't get into her room. And this is awkward. Quick check of how the Nerf was doing before bed. Okay, so I said 200,000 likes and I will show the, the oh, my, oh my God. <laughs> it's been 10 hours. I have made a serious error of judgment. Right, I really need sleep now. Night. All right, this is it, the big day. I'm uh, just heading to the hotel now, then, uh, and it's game time, and it's game time. But the tactics first, but uh, yeah, I am so key. I am so key. Come on. All right, hotel room, hotel room. Let's have a look. Pretty snazzy, snazzy. That is the word I'd use. Hey look, we've actually found people. The stadiums look a lot smaller and there's no one in it. Do you know what I mean? I'm pretty sure it's not just me. <laughs> so this is a changing room we could have had. Oh, oh, Brilliant. Oh, <laughs> 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 Sorry, who's the bad Spencer's <laughs> gone with <laughs> number six <laughs> again. Oh, oh, Dino, oh, red oh, man. Oh, Alright, oh, here oh, we go. Oh, and this is our changing room. Oh, These kits oh, are not too too bad. Oh, it's got a bio feel to it. Yeah, it does actually. Wait. Oh here he is. Christopher. MD, what am I on? I'm on ten. Oh, he's number ten. He's definitely not on our team. <laughs> He's just not. <laughs> Look at this guy loudly snapchatting. Like he owns the place. Who do you think he is? Sorry. All right, so I'm documenting this huge dilemma I've got at the moment. Basically, all right, Cal's got his on as well. Oi, cut that out. These are actually really sick, but do I go with these or the trusty ones that I've worn for far too long in my videos? Because let's face it, these ones say, please snap me, someone. Only bad thing about this changing room, no pegs. I was just like, where can I put my coat? No, that doesn't work, does it? Alright, Southampton Tunnel Camp. Look at this. We march on. We did get beaten 4-0 last time here though, so <laughs> hopefully gonna perform a little bit better today. <laughs> okay, we've got on the pitch a little bit early. As I said, uh, the others are doing like a meet and greet before um like kind of everyone else gets here. But uh, me and Cal have got the football pitch to ourselves at the moment, so we thought we might as well do a bit of a warm-up. Go on, chuck crossbar for a fiver. Get in the bin. Alright, what's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? Um I, I can, can we can we transfer it? Oh, oh no, the Doma! Cow's over there, retrieving yet another football <laughs> from the stands. We're just getting all the, uh... <laughs> We're just getting all of the uh, bad ones out of our system before the game. It's actually pretty hot. I was thinking this is like perfect um, footy conditions. But I'm not too sure anymore. Uh, top corner, top left. Ready? Is it looking lonely? Oh my days. Yo, I beg you actually do that in the game. Chris, you have one job and that is it. One job and that is it. The fans are arriving. <laughs> now there's not much vlogging past this point because around this point I decided that I sort of just wanted to take in the whole experience, you know, and fully take in what a, like an amazing day this was. But obviously you just can't resist vlogging when, uh, you, when you walk out in front of the crowd for the first time. Yo. <laughs> Walking out in front of that crowd there, like with that reception, is genuinely one of those things that I will just never forget. These people behind the goal are genuinely really brave. Look, my most memorable shot I've taken in a warm up ever. I literally just had to apologize to whoever I hit in the crowd for that. So, what I thought I'd do is go through like some individual highlights, talk through some of the goals as well, not all of them. 
saw them all at the time. But yeah, I'm sure you'll know the teams. Uh, this is a very, very gentlemanly nod from Spencer there. And, uh, <laughs> slightly awkward pause in the handshake between the ref and Ethan, but we get there. But yeah, kick off, and I got the ball straight away. I was like, we're going on the front foot. We're heading straight into it. I didn't realise how well we were passing it in the in the opening like parts of the game because at the time it was just all a bit of like a blur. Like we started really well looking back at it, and this happened re a lot earlier than I thought it did. Um, I mean, Joe tackles me. That was not a great start. Now, I'd passed it quite a few times at this stage, so when I when Cal just hammered the ball at me here, I was like, I'm going for it. It was so early in the game that, like, everyone was just kind of caught off guard, and, yeah, went past, like, three of them, got into the box. P apparently, that's not a penalty, according to the ref, so, nevertheless, the game went on. I mean, all of our defence had some really good moments. Like, Joe and Tom were really s solid right and left back, particularly at the start, and Poet was just cleaning up everything. George had a really good game as well, got an assist, obviously. <laughs> okay, okay, right, we're gonna address this. Jamie brought me down, penalty awarded. You, you, I mean, we all saw the one I scored in the warm-up, so there was literally nothing to worry about. I was confident as I went up to take it. I didn't even, like, let anyone else look at it. I was just like, I'm having this. Hugh Wizzy was saying something to me, but I was just kind of laughing at him at this stage because I was thinking how far in the top corner I was gonna put it. Three minutes into the game, just the 500,000 people watching or so. Stepped up. I knew I was gonna put it left. I was gonna put it top left if I could. And put it in. Straight in the back of the net. 1-0 to other. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I went with my old boots, by the way. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're not great for penalties. It's something I've discovered recently. I don't know what happened. Like, I've never missed a pass or a shot or anything by that far. Like, I reckon I could take another 100 penalties and I wouldn't put it down the middle so far. Away. Like, I could pretend that I it was aiming that down the middle and I was expecting you, Wizzy, to move, but... I don't know what happened. <laughs> like, you know what? I, <laughs> I just I can't explain it. I honestly don't know how I managed to miss the left side of the goal by that far. But if anything, my Lionel Messi impression was on point because he did miss 44% of his penalties last season. So, like, who's the real one? <laughs> who's the real one here? And then I slipped on my touch for the second one and I was just like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> it's just one of those things, you know, that's life. But... If anything, that made me like more, mo much more motivated to play better for the rest of the game. Yeah, see straight away, I was just like asking for the ball because I just wanted to get another touch on it so I could kind of get that out of my mind. And yeah, one, two, it was, it was a nice one too. It's weird because at the time, I thought we were kind of outplayed in the first half. I thought they really deserved their lead. But looking back on this, we had like so much possession and played so much better football. I think it was just, they were just really clinical at times. And like, we weren't looking at no one in particular. Okay, right, si Simon's throw-ins. We need to have a little talk about them. Th they just shouldn't be allowed. It was like when Arsenal used to play against Stoke and you'd see the players kicking, like kicking through balls out of corners instead of throw-ins. Cause you realized it was less chance of conceding a goal. Oh, that was such a bad tap. Poet, honestly, that's a straight red in a normal game. Like for all JJ's overreacting, that is a straight red, no questions asked. Yeah, Simon was annoyingly good at this stage. I remember he had a couple of really nice touches. Like, I really do want to play on the same team as him one time, but uh, yeah, I was having none of it at this point. Oh my God, Vooch just went on one here. I was like, see, I'm next to him. I'm just like, what? You, I, I have no idea how to cover this situation. And then Harry got it, and it was like instant Jersey v Guernsey passion. I was like, no. None of this halfway line goal business, which uh, lasted well until the second half. Josh did really well to bring that down and just get it back in the danger area. And uh, Marcus, I mean, I'm not sure we'll need the uh, dubious goals panel to fully decide who that one goes to. Vic came off, Manny came on. Now, this was where the game kind of changed, and I think we all sort of knew it would. So Manny went up front with Simon, and serious problems at this stage. This, this clip in particular, right, he's just played a ball from the halfway line, Simon crosses it in, who gets on the end of it? How is he there? <laughs> Marcus as well had a quietly, like, a, sorry, Aaron Ramsey, but like quietly had a really solid game. I don't think anyone particularly noticed that at times, but like a couple of touches here and there, he was just like very solid the whole game. And um, yeah, I was on corner duty, and uh, Put this one in. Cal gets his head on it. Tobias, that is so close to an absolutely first class finish. And uh, that would have made up for the own goal. See, we were really unlucky looking back at this. Then at this point in the game, Nep did that to Toby. Like, is that allowed? But yeah, just before half time. Cal's doing some decent tracking back there. Like left back to be fair. But Simon kind of just has the strength. Gets around him. And then Toby's just quicker than all of us at the back post. Which is kind of unfortunate. And uh, that was 2-0. 
But, you know, didn't tell the whole story at this stage, even though, you know, they easily deserved their two goals, like we did as well. But it was a strange half time, because we were like, we really shouldn't, like, do we change anything? Because we could easily go into the next half and, you know, win it 2-0. We ended up going to 4-4-2, just to be a little bit more attacking. And, uh, I mean, we were more, we were more attacking. So were they. Into the second half, and our formation change started off badly. Then... Even more badly. Then things got a little better. And a great through ball. Absolutely brilliant through ball from George. And uh, Joel with a great finish. That was actually a really quality goal. I think the question is, when did they get up that high? Like, there's no point when you're just like, yes, they're, sh they're just suddenly there. Ugh, this back hill went badly. Luckily, uh, <laughs> luckily, Vix was pretty much the same like, kind of level. And then Manny just... I mean, you, there's, there's only so much you can do when you just have to sort of stand there and just applaud like that goal. I wish I'd scored it. <laughs> Had a couple of nice runs down the right wing, actually. Um, Spencer and Jamie went past them. And then this would have been an assist, if not for, like, that is a ridiculous save from Hugh Izzy. That is proper reactions. That's not like it's just hit him either. That is a quality, quality save. You had a ridiculous game. And then I got a bit of a half chance when I was in. I actually had way more time than I thought I did. I thought Jamie was right behind me, and he wasn't. I caught it well, but straight at the keeper. It's one of those either side. We're kind of hanging around the right wing position for a little while. Got the ball again, and uh, yeah, it's a nice little take on, actually. Nice little take on. Got the ball across. Again, just doesn't come off for us. Talk us through that one, Joe. <laughs> now, kind of around this point, I've never had cramp in, like, during a football game. I've had it, obviously, you have it after a football game when you're, like, just lying down, you accidentally bend your leg or something. I've never had it during a football game before, and I didn't realise how much I ran in this game. So what I really didn't need was, like, a one-on-one -on -one little battle with Manny in the middle of the pitch. I was just like, stop running at this stage, just stop. Then Ethan chops me down. Um, not really sure what this handshake, like, what is that? What is that? What is it? Wait, it Okay, turns out I will just go through all the goals. I'm not sure Cal will want to see that one again. Then there was about five minutes where there was just three goals. We pretty much scored from the kickoff. Joe had a shot, Mitch kept this in, and Joe with a great finish into the near corner there. And the stream completely missed it, which I found out later, but Simon just... Like, all of us just sat down at this point, just like, what is what is the point in us being here? The thing is, I was literally standing in front of him, going, no, 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 as he ran up to hit it. Yeah, that one hurts. Oh, yeah, and I did actually get, my legs finally did give in around this point of the game. I just couldn't move, and cr I started getting cramped, like, up the, I think it was both of my left, no, maybe just my left. True Geordie and um, Lawrence seemed, yeah, they were quite sympathetic, so I thank them for that. He's all right, he's all right, all right. He's up, everyone, he's up, he's up. He's up. He's he's up. up. He's up. Anything happened to Chris? No. I wouldn't want to live Not my Chris. I wouldn't That's want to live without Chris. And then Bateson with a ferocious two-footer takes out Vooch and we got another penalty. And then Vooch joined the club. I mean, Hugh really didn't have to do a lot to save those two penalties. Um, should really not have been 7-2. But yeah, as it got near the end of the game, it was obvious that, like, there was always going to be someone who tried to get on the pitch, at least. And the ref was, like, saying, do you know what's happening kind of thing? Uh, like, there's probably going to be a pitch invasion. We need to make sure everyone's on this side of the pitch just for safety reasons and stuff. So, yeah, it looked a little bit odd when we all just sprinted off the pitch. It wasn't like we didn't want to meet you guys or anything. But, um, that's the reason, you know? <laughs> and yeah, that was kind of it. Madness at the end of the game. But, uh... Yeah, basically just congrats to the side men. All of the, I mean, everyone played really well, to be fair. But uh, they, I mean, they did. They deserve one after the Wembley Cup. They really did. But yeah, congrats to them and everyone who played. I think if I was going to give man of the match to someone, I'd probably go Simon. Manny scored a ridiculous goal, but in terms of general play and everything. Um, Simon's touches here and there were very good, but obviously him and Manny were pretty much the same level, so. And thanks to everyone tweeting me for Man of the Match for the All-Stars. I think I'd have been slightly higher up, if not for the penalty, but, you know, that's life. I will just have to incorporate some more scoring the perfect penalty challenges before the next game. Yeah, I don't want to do that twice, really. Right, back in the hotel room. And I literally, I was just so tired. I couldn't really vlog anything because I was just focusing on getting here. So mixed emotions, I think really. I've never got cramp during a football game before. I got it here, here, 
there and there as well. So literally four different muscles. The penalty was just, this just, it wasn't, it just wasn't very good. But yeah, I think the sidemen kind of deserved one on us after the Wembley Cup. And uh, yeah, obviously like people, it's, it's for example, like Manny scored who, you know, he scored a really good goal. And after missing the sitter at Wembley, it was kind of like, you know, swings around, but that's fair enough. It was just incredible. Like it's amazing being in this position, especially after being on like 600K or whatever I was like, last time in the Wembley Cup and being able to see all you guys. Yeah, mad day. Mad day. I've somehow got to have a bath and just exist for a few hours and then muster up the strength to go to this after party. So apart from being a professional footballer, that's literally like as close as you come. Do you know what I mean? With like a live crowd like that, it was just, it was unbelievable. It was absolutely unbelievable. So um, yeah, that is kind of my thoughts. I'm not sure if I vlog anymore. Might do. Actually got back to my hotel at about 5 a.m. in the morning, watched the entire live stream. Raised 100,000 for the charity. The link is in the description, by the way, if you do want to donate. Thank you so much to the Sidemen and everyone involved for making it possible. Hopefully more in the future. But before you go, with the Euros coming in just a few days now, same day as my birthday, just saying. Considering there's like three games each day, with the Copa America as well, it's I feel like now's a good time to tell you a little bit about like a football app where you can just keep on track of everything. So I've recently become aware of this app called One Football, which is just generally perfect for everything around the Euros. Completely free, it's for, you know, iOS, Android, 12 different languages, I think. It's just like so easy to use. It's just got everything about football. And like, there's gonna be a lot of football on. So with something that like gives you push notifications, etc., it's something good to have. You can put in your team. So obviously like Arsenal and England for me. Basically it's football news, live scores, like results, you know, Premier League, Champions League Euros, obviously Euros in the next few months. It's just like everything in one place and it is on like when I used to go when I I remember I used to go on like the BBC Sport gossip page and stuff for like <laughs> <laughs> in school when you really weren't meant to be. The great thing about it is it literally just gives you all relevant news about, so for example, there's Vardy, because, you know, who knows what's happening with that right now. It's literally just everything to do with football that you kind of need info on in one app to do with the gossip, to do with scores, everything. For example, I haven't checked the Vardy situation in a few hours. Vardy not expected to make Arsenal decision before end of Euros. Brilliant. But yeah, obviously with tables, uh, knockout stages and everything like that, it's always kind of hard to find things like that. I don't know if that's just me, but... This, this is a good idea. So basically, if you're into football, which you probably are after watching this video, if you want any info or literally anything to do with the Euros, I'd really recommend that app. It's brilliant. I think the Sidemen match is on about 7 million views at the time I'm uploading this, which is just unbelievable. But anyway, the link to their charity, as I said, the link to the app is all in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. And just remember, Lionel Messi missed 44% of penalties last season. Impression was on point. Thank you for watching, and I shall see you later. What is that? Wait, it's... Messi. Oh. Messi! Oh.